Hey everybody, welcome back to the Final Fantasy VII Let's Play. Playing one of my favorite tracks in the game actually right now. This is Underneath the Rotting Pizza. I love the bass in this song. Wait, that's what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, it's called because underneath you're underneath the rotting pizza. The, so basically the way it uh, works, Elliot, is that Midgar has a lot of support plates. Yeah, I know that. And on the surface, people in, people that have a higher standards of living live on the surface. Yeah. Above gonna, the plate, you could say. It. Yeah. Everybody else below is in the slums. Pretty much I love live this in thing. impoverished lines and all sort of thing. Yeah. I love this fucking theme. Yeah, this theme is great. We'll be heading here later, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this looks great. We gotta go. <laughs> Can't take the scenic route right now. I gotta I gotta see more dirt. Look at that hand. <laughs> more metal plates. You gotta you gotta understand the suffering that these people live through on a daily basis because they can't move anywhere else. No, they really can't. I mean, if they had more money, they could probably move to the surface at the very least. Right. You know, because uh, that's actually kind of one thing that I've always was a little confused on uh, as a kid playing this was that I, for some reason, like despite the dour circumstances, I also kind of got the feeling that folks in the slums in Midgar were forced to stay there. Like they couldn't leave. When in reality, they can leave whenever they want. It's just that how far are you going to get? Yeah. So, which in reality means they can't leave. Yeah. But I always took them as like literal prisoners. Like they were. Oh, like, prisoners. Yeah. No. It's like, no, they're not prisoners, prisoners, by, capital prisoners by capitalism, but. Yeah. But it's like, more so like, you know, they can't make a living. They can't, The living they can't won't pay enough for it as is. So you may as well just carve out a living they, down here. They have their own places, but they're still, but they're still prisoners. In their mind, like uh, one of the one of the instances that like made me think about that because uh, later because we're we're on our way to uh, to Aerith's house, and her mother lives there. No, oops. Uh, I'm sorry, oops house. <laughs> oops, all houses. <laughs> We just talked to that one guy, by the way, which is going to be a plot point later, but yeah. he's he seems to have a bad case of Mako poisoning, which is something we haven't heard of in this game just yet. I want to bother with the Titan Bangles. Yeah, because... Oh, I buy them anyway because it's whatever. E either way, um, it doesn't really... Because uh, to me, uh, this is a habit I've always had since my youth. Yeah. That if, if there's a better accessory available now, I'll get it now. Uh, I know to a certain point I don't do that with certain weapons because I know, okay, I'm not going to bother buying this because I'm going to steal a much better weapon like 10 minutes later. When you learn that later, right? Yeah, so there's no point in doing that. But with the Titan Bengals, uh, Matt's absolutely right because there's not many encounters between now and our next major point of interest. And at that point, you can buy Mithra Armless, uh, which are just way better than Titan Bengals, so there's really no point in investing in them. Right. Uh, also, uh, if you really want to, uh, it's 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 a, it's a little. Uh, it doesn't take much time to farm ethers in this game. Well, this early on, and ethers sell for 750 gil a pop. And uh, at one point, I'm going to del deliberately sell like six ethers I have in my inventory just for a lot of money, so that I can comfortably buy shit and also buy a lot of grenades, because grenades are really powerful this early on in the game, at least until you exit Midgar. Yeah. Or you're doing it. Or you're doing a one of those kind Check of runs that fucking needs to do it. So the, is the reason they're called avalanche is because whenever they take out a Mako reactor, they always leave an avalanche of debris? Well, it's more like, well, uh, sure. What happens when a bunch of snowflakes gather? You get an avalanche, <laughs> <Never lunch>. baby. <laughs> no, no, you get you get bla you get blanketed streets. So you talk. See, there's this drawer <laughs> here you can check, and you can talk to this kid. He's sleep talking. If you talk to this kid, you realize there is a hidden drawer between the top and bottom one, and you find five gil. You get the option to take it or leave it. You want to leave it though, because if you take the five gil now. It's five gil. And Congratulations, an you just robbed the child. Uh, <laughs> later down the road, though, by that I like, like the half an hour later, <laughs> you'll find that kid, and he's really happy that he you know he was able to save up his money, and he gives you the item that he bought. Like I never got that, but it's whatever. It's, and it's like a, it's a turbo ether. <laughs> this is just like taking candy from a baby, which is fine by me. Give you an ether. Hey, I take it too, but the turbo ether. So you then. Get the kids' possessions regardless. Well, it's more like, but he he gives it to us. That's the difference. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't steal it from him. I'm trying to read this guy's fridge. <laughs> Did your mother ever tell you not to go into other people's houses and bars their fridge? Yeah, Russ. Hey, that's my chili. Cut, <laughs> cut that out, Russ. Hey, Photoshop Russ's head there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> did you just take my? Did you just take my purple stuff? That's Fabuloso, dude. You're going to be poisoned. Yeah, no. Well, wait, why'd you, okay, well, first of all, why'd you put it in the fridge? <laughs> I, it was by accident. Yeah. <laughs> you, ever had the, you ever had that instance where you accidentally put your bleach in the fridge? No. I've had instances where I put my cereal box in the fridge because I got my wires crossed. You know, it happens. Sometimes we're delirious. <laughs> I love cold corn pops. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I keep thinking that's an entry point to something every time I play this game, and it's Same. not. Same. Got to go through the beam of light. Walk into the light. Club. I bet you I bet you it will be in a remake. Yeah, probably. 
There's our covered materia back there. It goes right on cloud early on. There's a waterfall here. Where the hell is it coming from? The sewage. Probably sewage water. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's probably sewage water. <laughs> that or Elmira that or got some killer real estate for this. Yeah, I know. It's like, well, she lucked out when she moved here. <laughs> yeah, like, she got a nice house. She got some sunlight. Got a save point. Like, what else yeah. do you need? Oops, I'm home, Mom. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to walk in here. Oops, uh, this is Cloud. You're fault again? Yeah. <laughs> His name's Cloud. Can he float? <laughs> Her name's Oops. What she planned? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ouch, dude. <laughs> yeah, Cloud cuts close to the bone. <laughs> God damn. It's like big bro. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that mini game too in the Wall Market remake. Talk, talk about big dick energy doing that. <laughs> That's not big dick energy. That's fucking small dick energy. Had to hurt, had to hurt a woman with a fucking joke like that. Ugh. Cloud, that's uh, very behind the times, buddy. Well, then again, this was 1997. <laughs> Once again, the game is very politically incorrect in a lot of ways, and I love it for it. Oops, you just got home. <laughs> like, what the hell? Oops, I give up. <laughs> Which yeah. is what Amira wants to say, but truth be told, she tries to kick us out tonight. Well, because it's more like she wants us to just leave without letting Aerith know. Because given the circumstances, right. she doesn't really want anyone near Aerith. Because, you know, technically, Aerith is on the run. Like, yeah. from a, from the Turks, who are very, very, very lenient in her taking them back to the research laboratory. Is she FBI's most wanted? <laughs> no, Kinda? but she is... Did she not pay her taxes to the The way IRS? I look at it... So the way I look at it, because originally I was bothered by the fact that the Turks take so... They know where Aerith lives. A flashback confirms that. At least Seng knows where she lives. You know, so I'd imagine he always talks to the Turks. It's like, you know, she lives here. She's always here. Where the hell does she have to go? She's the only last, she's the last of her kind. But it's also like, you, you know, you play more of it. It's also like, okay, we know she's not going anywhere. So why do we need to take her to the research laboratory now? <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about or the why, other, why I'm, haven't we done it earlier? I'm, yeah. th I'm thinking about the bouncer again. Well, what is it? Remember with, Domin with uh, Dominique? Yeah, what about her? How she, how she was actually in a lab too? There was a reason for that though, but it's not like <laughs> not to that ex not to that extreme in this game. That'd be some fucking killer plot twist though, right? Your fucking Aerith was a robot. <laughs> Holy shit! And she she can fight and shit. Yeah, well, I mean, Aerith can fight now, but she doesn't need to be a robot for She's that. Mage. Also, spoiler for the bouncer. <laughs> Dominique <laughs> crosses an android in that game. If you haven't played it, just yeah. just just you need to play it for yourself. It, it's cheap. It's a cheap game now. I yeah. Just just play it. It was launch window square game for the PS2. It's fucking worth it. <laughs> I'm gonna grab this potion in Phoenix down here in the item. It's just very nice. PS, uh, this part's kind of hell for this part was hell for me in the mobile version. Yeah, it is. My, I, remember, I remember you struggling the hell out with this version in, in that mobile. version of the game. Yeah, yeah, because I kept like fucking. I don't know why. Because it was hard for my character to just walk. Kept, so. yeah. kept bonking everywhere. But, but basically, uh, you have to sneak out of the room without Aerith knowing. And basically, it, don't hold run at all because that'll immediately give you away. And you also have to work a certain pattern because yeah. if you just go from a straight line, you will cause the floorboard to creak. And it doesn't really matter because she's here anyway. You're all bright and early. Did you no. just ninjutsu teleport over there? I what know the magic. Hell? Are you a genius? I mean, a genie. I know what I meant. <laughs> Spell genius cloud J E N I J E N. Spells Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> anyway, so the so pathway from sector five, no, se sector six. Sector it six is sector seven. Dilapidated. Yeah, it's dilapidated. And it's also this also is a random robot hand here. <laughs> it's supposed to be. It's just there to be like you know. Hey, you're going the wrong way. I guess. So. <laughs> Was it like a dope slap? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's more like one of those. It's like well, the level layout is basically that if you go over everything unique, you'll eventually find your way to the exit. Not the case here. So that's just there to like trap players to thinking, hey, we're supposed to go this yeah. way when we're not. Sector six is inherently more dangerous than sector five because there are actual encounters between sectors here. We're because we're we're heading back to sector seven now that we survived our fall. It's okay, the roof broke our fall. And our back. Yeah, and our back in many different ways, but it's cool. We have Mako poisoning. I mean, Mako infusion. <laughs> you also have magic material to take the sting out of all of that. Basically. Uh, Ice Saw works better on these things. That said, uh, yeah, the enemies here, uh, well, besides being encountered in groups of four, are really aggressive. They're really fast. Like, these dudes are really fast. Yep. Good for your limit breaks, though. Yeah, because they, they do a substantial amount of damage, and if they crit, that's even more so. One thing, um... What was I about to say? The, uh... 
with magic being like this available to you, I imagine that's why it's not too bad of an issue when your back breaks. It's a lot like Resident Evil, where they gave Rebecca Chambers a job in the med medicinal department, despite their magic being first aid in a can. Yeah. <laughs> hey, someone's got to spray it. And right? you need a medical license to even use it. That's so. <laughs> that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Fucking umbrella. <laughs> They could have made so much more money too. They just decided yeah, to know. just be like you know pharmaceuticals all the way. But uh, yeah, like an actual pharmaceutical company. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you yeah. know, Spencer had to go. I want to be God, <laughs> 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 which, which we've all gone through. I'm sure. I will be God of un yeah, zombies. I really like to conquer Europe. <laughs> <laughs> mm, Africa sounds it's nice. I hope they keep this in the remake. The Armstrong, yeah. That'd yeah. be so funny. This is Hell House. Yeah, it's called Hell House. Uh, later games would give it the proper Armstrong title it deserves. But the Hell House monster is really fucking unique. Yeah. And because so, it does this shit. Yeah. After a while, after a certain HP threshold, it will do Suicide Drop and expose itself for what it really is. A Hell House. Yeah. Look at that thing. It's got a skull for a head, three turbines in the back, a scythe for a left hand. Whatever the hell I'm going it's on. Gonna, I wonder if it'll be like the size of a big house and they turn it into a boss battle. Yeah, which I think or, they or, would or, do, or at least like an optional, like an optional mini boss, so you don't have to encounter. I it. honestly would like the, uh, the straight up boss battle mechanic for this, which I think would really work in Seven Remake to be a boss battle. It's also like, why does it look like a house? Why does it look like <laughs> a house? What was the original purpose of this thing? It's one of the, it's like one of those booby trap things. The Armstrong they talk about it like the Armstrong demon and um Crystal Chronicles doing the same thing, where basically the monster. The house itself became a monster due to the miss the mirror's influence. Yeah. Not the mirror, the uh the miss influence. And by the time the traveling party for Tita came back, they walked right into the Armstrong Manor and died. Because the house ate it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's like it's basically like the uh a really extreme version of the trapdoor spiders. The gate detectors that was in there. Fucking house? <laughs> <laughs> what the we hell just... is that about? <laughs> <laughs> Is this normal in where you're from? Oh yeah. Usually it's a better usually it's usually it's in a much better mood. It's like, you know, when you said you were used to danger, I thought you meant but like you're on the run from like Shinra executives. No, even the fucking houses here attack you. The hell? I don't remember I mean, let's be honest, there were dragons up in my neck of the woods, but houses? That's yeah, just absurd. Houses, I mean, that's supposed to be a place of comfort and stability. Yeah, who gets eaten by a house? Yeah, who lives in a dragon? <laughs> <laughs> he actually gets eaten by the house. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> a house for ants? <laughs> How do you think that donster shit? Wait, let's, look that, so, let's look at that picture. <laughs> wait, so, so what What were you in soldier? First class. First class? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Basically what it... That's, I, I haven't kept you up... You say that, but that's kind of exactly what's happening. I haven't that. kept up with Machina Bridge in a while. Yeah. <laughs> like, since their new season started. Oh, up. is that from Machina Bridge? Yeah. Okay, I don't really uh, watch that one a whole bunch. I don't either. But that's basically exactly what's happening. Meanwhile... Look at uh, that chocobo. Do you think you can ride that chocobo? No. Quick. There's no chuckle rodeo here. Quay. Also, Tifa has no face. Why have any Tifa's face? Where's her? She looked kind of odd. Yeah, she was missing her face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even ride the slide appropriately. Can't even fit into that damn thing. Well, she isn't a grown ass adult. I imagine she gets stuck for out of hilarity like the Metro Barrett getting stuck in that thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, I want to go on the slide. Well, Daddy don't want to go on the slide. <laughs> hey, I, I'm not trying to catch no smoke, okay? <laughs> One walkway later, and we're back into, and now we're at, uh, oh. <laughs> well, well, off. where will we be going next time? I don't it's like, know. It's like Symphony of the Night with the hallway. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to find out next time, won't we? Darn.